Welcome back, Jayhawk fans, to Over 50. This is the review of Kansas easily handling Tarleton State uh, by a score of 88 to 62. Start off with some statistics for you. Um, Ochai Abaji was amazing again. Only 25 points this time, six rebounds, one block, one assist. But I think, personally, I think the player of the game who had the best overall game was Christian Brown because the guy could not find his shot, couldn't keep track of his defender, and then he still manages to put in 16 points, 8 rebounds, 5 blocks, and 5 assists. I mean, the dude was cruising until the end of the game when they started rotating players in and out. I mean, he could have, I think he could have had a triple, a triple double. I mean, that, that was definitely possible, you know, the way he was blocking shots. So that was, I think he was the player of the game. The only other Jayhawk to score in double figures was Remy Martin. He had 14 points, three assists, and three turnovers. Uh, before I continue on, talk about uh, Zach Clements' um, awesome Rainbow 3 and a few other things. If you're new here, please hit that subscribe button. Subscriptions would really help. Hit the like button if you like the video. Um, I guess you could hit the dislike button if you dislike the video, but YouTube has disabled all the dislike options so i don't know just putting that out there i hope you wouldn't dislike it but anyhow smash the like button hit the subscribe button hey have a question or a comment drop it down below share this video out there and talk about some things that jayhawks need to work on shooting free throws first half it was horrendous and under five seconds left on the shot clock defense because there was a couple times where the jayhawk players just ran away from the ball it's kind of like if you ever um, you know, have like some, uh, you have some salt and, you know, not salt, pepper floating in, you know, the water and you drop some vegetable in the vegetable in it, boom, pushes it all out, you know, um, and everything moves away from it. That's kind of like what happened with the Jayhawks players. They just kind of stop guarding the ball. Just the guy with the ball. Oh yeah. Let's just let him shoot. Um, so, but other than that, uh, it was a pretty good game. Um, of course, they were playing against a team that Bill Self said at the uh, the pre-conference or the, the, I guess, the presser that he has before the first game in uh, Fog Allen Fieldhouse. He said that uh, Coach Gillespie used to be on his staff at Illinois. And he said that, you know, he's going to have a short team, a small team. They're going to play five guards. They're going to try to play intensely, but they're going to try to manage the shot clock and keep the game down around 50 or 60. They did a good job of that. They did. They kept it around 62 for them, but the problem is the Jayhawks poured in 88. So it wasn't that difficult of a game for them. As I said, Abashi just makes things look way too easy. I mean, I lost track of how many alley-oops. One alley-oop, I mean, Remy Martin almost threw the ball up into the rafters, and he still went up and got it. That was amazing. McCormick, free throws are something that he needs to work on, but his D was really good. I'd like to see them feed him the ball a little bit more so he can get into the swing of things because you're not going to be playing five teams that run out five guards at you every week. You're going to have to have a big guy that can score. And maybe possibly the play of the game to uh, Jalen Coleman-Sands, not just for the fact that, you know, he hit three threes, but... The fast break was started. The outlet pass was like 10 feet in front of him. The guy dives out of bounds, bats it behind him, saves it. They kick it back out. They kick it to him. He gets the ball, catches his breath, and then, you know, shot fake, sidesteps, and drains a three, all in the same play. That was just amazing. I just was, I, I'm so thrilled, so thrilled we got that guy. I think he's like the only guy that Iowa State had that was worth transferring into the portal because everyone else sucks. And that's why Iowa State is picked to be last in the Big 12 Conference this year. Um, the last thing, uh, Zach Clements. He did not get a chance to play much. And the reason behind that is he's um, he's just not suited for playing against a team that runs five guards. You know, he's like 6'9", 6'10", and, you know, it's just that – that just doesn't work because it's hard to stay with a guy who's 6'5". But he had this one three where it looked like the arc of the three was the same level as the shot clock. 
and he drained it. I mean, nothing but net. I mean, he just, I mean, you know, he looked like, yeah, I was going in all the way. Um, that was amazing. That was cool to see. Got some red shirt news for you. Red shirt news. They are going to red shirt, and I just forgot who it was. Oh, Cam Martin. Cam Martin's going to red shirt. And he will be, I guess, like one of the extra players. Uh, this year, you can have two super seniors. So you can have up to 14 on your team this year. Whereas before, you could only have 12. So they're going to drop that down to one, I guess, one super senior next year. I, I forget exactly how they're working it. But um, Bill Self said he would be number 13 in that situation. So he would be able to, I guess, um, come back and he's not going to lose a year, something like that. Um, Dylan, they're talking with Dylan about him, uh, red shirting. So they think that, um, you know, that that's probably going to happen. Those two for sure. And they are talking to Kyle Cuff Jr. They'd like him to red shirt. He's talking it over with his parents to see if that, if that's the right thing he wants to do. So I don't know if Kyle Cuff is maybe going to try to, you know, transfer out, you know, to put him in a position where he can get a little more playing time. But those are the three guys that are confirmed for redshirting, and I heard it out of Coach Self's mouth. So, I mean, you're not going to get it much more accurately than that. So with that, um, I'm going to go ahead and close this down. I am going to be doing a new video, a look ahead at the 2022 recruiting class, incoming class, the, the recruits that we, are, that we already have coming in. We already have the top-ranked class in the Big 12. We have four great recruits coming in, but that's going to be my next video. I have to do some research on that and get some things situated, but um, I don't think any of the four, the, 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 the worst of the four recruits nationally was ranked 49th, I think, if I remember correctly. I might be wrong on that. I might be having my numbers mixed up, but anyhow, I wanted this to be a short video, so I hope you liked it. I hope I gave you some information. If you liked the video, please like it. If you aren't a member yet or haven't subscribed, please subscribe, comment down below. And until next time, Rock Chalk Jayhawk. And of course, let's go, Brandon.